In this video, I'm going to show you how to port a full auto head for increased performance. We'll be starting off with a full auto head. What makes the full auto head work so well is the raised port floor on the intakes. It also has a D-shape on the exhaust ports, which helps prevent reversion of the exhaust gases. Here's a comparison of the stock Norton intake port, this green line, with the full auto intake port, the black line. You can see the floor is raised. And it's got a nice, broad, smooth curve, which increases the flow and velocity. The red line here is an Harley XR750 port. So all we're going to do is move this over a little bit for the bigger valve, and it should match up with a Harley port. The green line is the stock Norton intake port. The black line, the full auto line, has been raised. And you can see it's nearly a match for this red line, which is the Harley XR750 port. We don't have much work to do here on the very top. If we had a longer intake valve and a steeper port, we could get by with a round port. But because of this curve, we need an oval shape, what I call the cobra head. And it's wider in the middle, especially around the guide and in the upper section of the port. This gives us more efficiency than a round port. This is a cross section of a full auto intake port near the guide. You can see it's oval shaped and the floor has been raised. This is a cross section of a Harley XR750 intake port near the guide. You can see the port's been raised high on the sides near the guide and the floor has been raised as well. I superimpose the XR750 port over the full auto port. The Harley port's a little wider and higher and it dips down for the guide to prevent cracking. This pencil line is a compromise between the two. I'm going to port the full auto ports a little bit higher and wider, but not as far as the Harley port. If you get really wide, like over 36 millimeters, you're going to have to move the oil drain hole between the ports. The whole point is to take the intake charge and bring it up a little higher in a broader curve so it comes straight down for better flow. This black line is a roof of the exhaust port for the full auto head. It's got a dip here for the guide. The red line is a Harley XR750 port. It's a pretty close match. The bottom of the full auto head is a little bit low. Ideally, it would come up higher like the Harley port, but it does come up higher than the stock Norton port. The main thing to watch out for when porting is not to go too large. If you get the ports too big, you're going to lose all the mid-range and the lower end. The other thing to watch out for is this oil return drain hole marked by this drill bit. This hole runs up right next to the intake port. And there's only about 0.1 inch of material. To determine the proximity of the oil drain hole, first I align a square with these bolt holes. Then I run a straight edge up alongside the oil drain hole and tape everything down in place. Then I use a square to run that line from the oil drain hole up to the intake port. You see I've got it marked right here. Another thin spot to watch out for is the wall thickness here between the ports. You see I've got a special caliper here with extensions and some special small points I made up for getting into tight places. Also check the material thickness here near the bolt hole. The thinnest spot is here between the top of the port and the spring pocket. You can see I've left a little bump there to help thicken it up. I've made a special extension on my caliper so I can get inside there and measure it. To increase the flow for higher RPM on this full auto head, we're going to go a little wider just around the guides, about two millimeters for this motor. If it was larger displacement or a hotter short stroke, we might want to go wider than that. We're not going to increase the vertical distance inside the port because it's good just where it's at. Since I'm putting in larger re-angled valves, you can see that the port is a little bit off here and I'll have to cut away some material to match the new circumference. 
This is a Harley XR750 port. You can see it swells a little wider around the guide. We're not going to go this extreme, but you get the general idea. For accurate dimensions and specifications, you want to get the JS Motorsport Gnarly Port CD. These are printed out to actual size, exhaust and intake. You can see I've made a plastic template here that matches the roof of the Harley XR750 intake port. After you've printed the AutoCAD plans onto printable plastic, you can use the template cutouts to keep track of your port shape. These are the tools of the trade. Die grinder, cutting burrs. You want to be careful with these because they're very aggressive. Cartridge rolls. These are what I spend most of my time with and you want to finish up with around 80 grit because if you go too fine, the fuel won't atomize. Simple internal machinist calipers for measuring inside the ports and a caliper and a visor so you can see what you're doing. We're going to start with some rough cuts to match the port with a new larger valve seat. Now I've got the rough cuts about a 32nd of an inch from where I want to be. That's close enough for now. Use your plastic template as you go. Make sure you don't go too far and check the contour. Next I'll be taking some material off right here on the sides of the guide and trimming down this guide boss to streamline it. We're going to take about one millimeter off on each side right here. I'll be coming at it from both ends and measuring as I go. Just do one side at a time. That way you can use the untouched side for reference. Okay, I've cut a little bit of a cobra head shape in there. I'm not going to go too far because I'm going to finish up with a cartridge roll. I've also recontoured the port floor radius leading up to the larger valve seat. The exhaust D ports are rough cast, so we're going to clean them up and take some metal off on the sides of the guide boss to help streamline it. Once again, I'm going to refer to the Harley XR750. This is an exhaust port mold and you can see how it widens around the guide for better flow. It also humps up a little bit. This is what I refer to as the cobra head shape. It's got a nice raised floor with a broad radius leading down to the valve. You can see I've roughed out the exhaust port and streamlined the guide boss. I've widened it about one millimeter on each side. Now I have to go through the same process all over again. This time with abrasive cartridge rolls, smoothing out imperfections and irregularities. When your porting tool spins, it leaves little grooves and ridges that you may not be able to see with the naked eye, but they're there. The ridges will show up if you wrap some sandpaper around your finger and rub the sides of the port, but that takes too long. So I came up with this tool. It's a simple jigsaw with a porting tool mandrel silver soldered onto the jigsaw blade. You want laminar flow. You want to take off all the high spots so you don't have any turbulence. There they are. The laminar flow cobra head ports by JS Motorsport. And here's the exhaust side. When you're done porting you want to match up the intake manifold with the ports. This blue line is a stock intake manifold. Notice that it does not match up with the port floor of the full auto head. There's a difference here in the angle. So what you can do is mill away a little material on the intake manifold. That way you can rotate it downwards and get a better match as shown with the green line. Then you'll have to trim a little off the end so the carburetors come out vertical.